effective prayer. Romans chapter number 15. This morning we're going to talk about encouragement. Point number four, encouragement. That I may come unto you with joy by the what? Anybody there? (laughs) The will of God. That I may with you be refreshed. Boy, it takes some refreshing to get y'all refreshed this morning. Amen. Encouragement. Everybody needs encouragement. I don't care who you are. Discouragement's a dime a dozen. It takes a real man or woman of God to be an encourager. Encouragement's a great tool if it's used properly. Encouragement's also hard work. Because sometimes you try to encourage people... And they don't want none of it. Some of y'all look that way this morning. You don't want none of it. Kind of like Brandon when he was a little baby. We pull out the spinach. He didn't want none of it. I couldn't get it in. I'd shove it and shove it and it wouldn't go. Uh, but you give him bananas now, he'd have some of that. But he wouldn't have none of that spinach. Sometimes people are so negative, And I'm sorry, but that's the way it is in the world we live today. People are so negative that it's hard to encourage them. The outlook is so bleak and so pessimistic. They have no hope. Well, I'm here to tell you there is a hope today. There is a hope today. And His name is Jesus. Amen? And we as the children of God, we've got to work hard to get that message of hope out. It is easier for our flesh and old nature to condemn, criticize, and complain. That's our nature. But it's a lot harder to be an encourager. You have to work at being an encourager, making sure you lift people up and not put people down. Because our natural inclination is to put everybody else down to lift ourselves up. That's our natural evil inclination. But the real way that we should live for the Lord is to put ourselves down and lift everybody else up. Amen? Put others first. As the redeemed, we're to be better than the world and the old flesh. We are to take up the good fight of faith and encourage one another and lift up one another. Encourage means literally to build up one's courage, in courage. To build up one's courage. And it takes courage to be a Christian. Why do we meet here on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and all over the Bible studies and all over the times? To build our courage. To stand for God. To live for the Lord. And to be a testimony and a witness in the world we live in. To build our courage. And we're either going to be cowards or we're going to be courageous. It's my hope that you'll be courageous. Amen? We need to build a church of courageous Christians who are not afraid to go out in the highways and hedges and compel people to come in that his house may be filled and souls might be saved. We need to work hard at making each other courageous. It should be the simplest task in the world, seeing we have the truth, we have the Holy Spirit, we have each other, but it's still hard. It's still tough to get the job done. We're to just encourage each other like to be like Christ and to do as He's asked us to do and to work hard at it. Christmas time is the easiest time in the world to get negative, trust me. Go to Walmart for five minutes any day the next week. And you'll understand what I'm talking about. I mean, go to food line. Go anywhere shopping the next five days. And you'll know how it's easy for a bad attitude to rub off. If the customers don't give you a bad attitude, I'll tell you who will. It'll be the cashier who's working double shifts because it won't open up extra registers. See, I'm complaining already. and ain't even got started yet. It's easy to complain. It's easy to complain. Easy to complain. But we've got to learn not to complain. We've got to learn to hold each other up. The world encourages themselves in wickedness. But we've got to encourage each other in righteousness. Psalms chapter 64 verse 5 says, They encourage themselves in an evil matter. They commune of laying snares privately. They say, Who shall see them? Satan's a tricky old fox. He loves to put you in a box, lock the door, and throw away the key. And play every trick on you he possibly can. To destroy you. To take your life apart. 
He encourages his demons in wickedness. His demons encourage the world in temptation and wickedness. But Deuteronomy chapter 3 verse 28 says this. But charge Joshua, the man of God, and encourage him and strengthen him. For he shall go over before this people, this wicked people, and he shall cause them to inherit the land which thou shalt what? See. Folks, the inheritance is coming. Jesus is coming. He can come any day now. So let's just be full of courage. Let's be faithful in this old wicked world. That he'll find us faithful. He'll find us working hard, laboring to build the kingdom of God. Encouragement. Well, first of all this morning, A is unison. That I may come unto you with what? He wanted to come to him with joy. Where is there, where there's unity, there's joy. Where there's unity, there's joy. Where there's unity, there's a team effort, a team work. Where, uh, where there's a teamwork, there's victory. Where there's victory, there's joy unspeakable and full of glory. Let me correct Dr. Tickle, okay? The men and the women are not meeting together just because the women cook more than the men. The first meeting in January. We're getting together for a team effort. Say amen or oh me. Setting an example of a team effort. Getting together to pray for the new year. Pray for the things coming to pass. Why? Because we're two or more gathered in His name, there I am in the midst. And so, look, it's going to be a wonderful thing to have the men and women get together and pray together. Yeah, the food's an added benefit, but the prayer's going to be the part that's the most important. Amen? The prayer's going to be the most important part. And listen, we've got to come in you, because where there's teamwork, there's joy. Psalms 133, verse 1. Behold, how good and pleasant is it for the brethren to dwell together in unity, together on the same page, not fighting each other, but pulling together. We're making progress together. We're making a difference together. Not only are we accomplishing something, it's pleasant and enjoyable. We're having a good time doing it. I'll never forget one compliment was paid with me that when I left my second pastor working the senior adults at Temple, they did an acrostic of my name. And one Anna Johnson got up and said, the W is for work. He liked to work us to death. But here was the compliment she said. But he made you think you were having a good time while you were doing it. It wasn't me. When you serve the Lord, it's hard work. But when you're doing it for the Lord, it's a lot of fun, isn't it? It's a lot of fun, isn't it? Y'all scared to death that word work. It's done got you polarized. Hey. But I guarantee you do it for the Lord, it'll be a lot of fun. There'll be joy in the camp. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Evangelists are soul winners. Pastors are uh, keepers of the sheep. Teachers are sharers of the word. And they do all this in verse 12, For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, which is the what? The church. We're here to edify the church, to build the church, to build a greater group of people, a stronger group of people, to do more for God, not less. Then it says in verse 13, Till or until we all come in the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect or a complete man, Unto the measure, the stature, the fullness of Christ. We've got to keep plugging away at it till everybody comes together. Till everybody's on the same page. Till everybody's cooperating and producing. We all have different jobs. We all have different abilities. None of us do the same things. Yet we all come together as a unit. Have you ever known the toe to see? Have you ever known the nose to balance you? Why? Because the toe balances you. You cut your big toe off, you'll find out real quick you're going to be imbalanced. Hey, every part of the body has a different function. And they're all different, but they're part of the same body. We're all a part of the church. We're all different, but we all function together. Amen? 
we all work together. And when we find our niche and we do our thing, we make the church a better place. We, uh, then it says we all have different jobs and different abilities, but yet we come together as a unit. One of our jobs is perfecting or completing the saints or building the, the saints. I got a card this morning, another great compliment. Thank you for teaching me so much about the Word of God. If I'm doing that, I'm doing my job. That's my job, is to teach you the Word of God. To make you not a perfect saint, but a perfected saint. A complete child of God, where the Holy Spirit's in you and working. In you and working good, by faith. Perfecting is the Greek word, kartimos. Katartimos. It means complete furnishing, perfecting. When we first moved in our house, it's hard to believe we've been there 16 years. We had several rooms didn't have nothing in it. I thought, we'll never fill this whole house up. That was a stupid statement. After 20 years, now we're throwing stuff out. Say amen or oh me. Don't have room to put everything. I'm trying to get rid of two uh, bachelors. Anybody interested? Trying to get rid of two bachelors so me and my wife can get back to living life. Say amen or oh me. You be quiet. I'm preaching this message, not you. I can't believe I ever taught that child to talk. <laughs> Sometimes you do some stupid things. Amen. But, hey, I didn't think we'd ever fill that house up, but it's full. You know, as a young Christian, you don't think you'll ever grow, but you will. You just keep coming to church studying the Word of God. God will fulfill you. He'll bless you, He'll grow you, He'll strengthen you, He'll mature you. Oh, listen, we need that maturity, that perfecting, that complete furnishing that comes with time and teaching. We're to teach and disciple one another, not tear each other up and beat each other to death. But to teach and disciple, that's done in love, not in rebuke or hatefulness or meanness. It's done in love. You're, we'll be doing what... Uh, we're here to do His work and to teach His Word. We're then to go and work through and, and with the church spread the gospel, the message of Christ. And we're to build the body of Christ from within and without. We're to bring people to Christ and then teach and train them to be like Christ. So uh, we with Christ can be a, a winning team. I want us to be a winning team, don't y'all? All right, well tonight's the first step. Let me tell you something. The Bible says if you offend one of those little ones, you don't hurt his feelings. And these little kids have worked hard this past month to put on this play. You back them up tonight. Amen? Bring some people with you tonight. See the play. Why? Because we need to encourage them. Encourage them to do what they're doing as little kids so they'll do it when they get old. All I'll say is this. I was young. But now I'm old. I was once a kid, and I was in Christmas plays. Now I'm old, and next Sunday I'm in this cantata. I must have been a stupid idiot. You just be here, and you'll know why. That's all I'll tell you. I promise you this. <laughs> you'll see your preacher as you've never seen him before. And you'll never see him that way again. I can promise you that. Y'all better get it on video if you want to get it, because I must have been crazy. But anyway, you do what you do to encourage your kids so they'll grow up and do it. Amen? That'll make sense next Sunday. don't make sense today, but when you come next Sunday, you'll laugh your head off and you'll say, that's right, he was an idiot when he was a kid and he's a worse one when he's an adult. But anyway, you raise them up. You raise them up to continue to serve the Lord and be faithful. Amen? I see little Joanne with that baby back there. You got that baby back there today? Uh -huh, I knew you did. I remember when she was that baby. And John had her. Well, she's still almost in his lap today, but anyway. Uh, you raise them up to what? Serve the Lord. They raised her in church. She comes to church. Now they're trying to raise that little boy to come to church. That's the way you do it. Amen? You train them and perfect the saints. Not only in unison, but undefiled. It says, by the will of God. Romans 15, 32b, by the will of God, but by the will of God. That's, folks, undefiled. If you're in the will of God, you'll be undefiled. 
If you're undefiled, you'll be in complete cooperation with God and His church. You'll be doing what He wants you to do, not what your flesh wants you to do. Some people didn't come this morning because they gave in to the flesh. I sat up on the side of the bed and fell asleep this morning. My flesh was saying, just lay on back down and go to sleep. And you know who woke me up? That stupid cat. That cat walked up to me and never heard him. Usually I, I can feel him coming across. Never felt him. He come up and got up in my face. <laughs> like, ain't you supposed to be going somewhere and get out of my spot so I can go to bed? You know. But I did. I felt dead asleep sitting on the side of the bed. Your body will fight you and try to stop you from serving God because it's your flesh. But we've got to build the spirit to overcome the flesh. Amen? Amen? All right, that's better. If we all do His will, guess what? Everything will go His way. And that's our goal. Yet we know everything's not going His way, so there's got to be some people out of the will of God. If we're going to be an anointed team of God that we ought to be, we must find His perfect will and pursue it. Now, real quick, you listen fast, and I say this fast. Six things. Number one, it's got to be personal. For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same as my brother, my sister, and my mother. The will of God's a personal thing. It's individual in all of us. My will for my life is not God's will for your life, and God's will for your life is not my will for my life. We're all different. We're all different, but we're all his brothers and sisters. We're all his family. Number two, it's got to be done passionately. Ephesians 6, 6. Not with eye service. You know what that is. You're good while mama's looking. Hmm? No, God's looking all the time. God's looking all the time. As men please us, but with servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, passionately, with good will, or good will, doing service as unto the Lord, not unto men. I come here this morning excited about teaching and excited about preaching. I want to give it my best because I have a passion for the Word of God. I have a passion for the people of God. Number three, proving. Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You see, folks, the longer you live and the more faithful you are to God, the more you prove God can work in your life. God can do something in your life. And it's a long haul, not the short run. It's not going to be just today or tomorrow. It takes time to prove God's will. Amen? I can look back on my life and I can see how God led me every step of the way. He led me down every step of the way, everywhere I've been. God's, God's been in it. But I didn't know that then, but I know it now. Why? Because I can look back and see how God put it together. You've got to have a long testimony to see and prove the will of God. Number four, prosperous. Romans 1.10. Making request, if by any means now at length, I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. How much fruit have you borne? How many people have you influenced for Christ? That's the key. Folks, we've got to be a team, but we've also got to work individually to win the loss, to be prosperous, to build the kingdom. Then number five, the promise, Hebrews ten thirty six. For we have need of what? Ain't that an ugly word? It's not a four-letter word, but it's an ugly one. Patience. Oh, none of us have patience, but we need it. That after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. You'll never get the promise till you have the patience. You've got to endure. You've got to endure. You've got to keep on keeping on. You've got to keep on fighting. You can't give up and quit. I remember a few years back, Angie Oaks back there was laying in the hospital bed. I wouldn't give you a plug nickel that she was ever coming home. Would you, sir? Never thought we could ever see her come home, did we? But see, she's Angie. And she don't know the word quit. And she don't know the word give up. When I went back to see her the next time, she was a totally different woman. Why? Because she didn't quit. Her family didn't quit praying. The church didn't quit praying. And she got better. And she got well. Now she's barking orders good. Am I right, brother? Okay. Barking them orders good. Hey, you've got to endure. You're going to go through a whole lot in this life. 
Nobody ever promised you. Well, they may have promised you a bed of roses, but you've got to understand that's a bed of thorns. There's more thorns than there are roses. But how sweet the roses are, amen, when you finally get to smell them and enjoy them. The promise. You've got to have patience before you receive the blessing. And then number six, the permanent. First John 2.17 And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God, what? Abide it forever. Folks, I don't know about y'all, but I got a ticket to heaven. And I'm headed there. I ain't in no hurry. But when I got to go, I know where I'm going. And I'm going to be there with him forever. Not because of me. Because of what Jesus did for me. And I put my faith in him. So, folks, undefiled means personal, passionate, proving, prosperous, promised, and permanently doing the will of God. Surrendering to him, submitting to him, and serving him. Now, we've talked about in unison. We've talked about being undefiled and doing the will of God. C, understanding. Romans 15, 32 C says, that ye may be, what? Refreshed. And may with you be refreshed. We will be a refreshing spirit to each other if we do the will of God. And we do it together. We'll be a blessing to everybody we come in contact with. Having understanding toward each other instead of a skeptical criticism. Folks, we've got to learn to understand each other. And have kindness and be patient with each other. Because God ain't through with none of us yet. We're all a work in progress. You say, well, how do you know when God's through with you? When you turn your toes up. That's when God's through with you. So there's, you're a work in progress every single day of your life, all of your life. We have a corporate participation. Look at 1 Corinthians 16, 15. I beseech you who? Brethren, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Ye know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that ye have addicted, addicted, circle that word, addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. That ye submit yourselves unto such and to everyone that helpeth with us and laboreth. Folks, I'm here to tell you, it's a good thing to be addicted to the work of God. Now, there are those who will say that that's wrong, but they haven't read their Bibles. Amen? I didn't just read that out of the, uh, the Reader's Digest. I didn't just read that out of People's Magazine. And it certainly didn't roll off the tongue of Ophrah. The Bible said that. That we'd be addicted to the ministry of the saints and that everyone help and labor together. That's a team effort, folks. He says here, I'm glad of the coming of Stephanus and Fortanus and Achaeus For that which was lacking on your part, they have supplied. He said, you know, God sent them three because you needed them. Amen? God sent those three because they completed the puzzle. They completed the chain. Doesn't the church look pretty? Juanita used to take care of that all the time. Diane, she would help her. Juanita's in heaven. and Diane's with her mama. And look who God sent us. Gail Dale and her personal elf, Jack. Huh? Doesn't that look pretty up there? Oh, you wait till next Sunday. It's really going to be something then. They're going to get ready to turn it into a park scene. It's going to really be nice. Boy, I didn't raise that level of expectation, haven't I? <clears throat> but you know what? God brings you who you need. Amen? Completes the team. Keeps us going. Everybody's got their part. Everybody's got their place. Everybody's got their necessity and things to do. So, folks, we've got to understand that. And it says in verse 18, For they have refreshed my spirit and yours. Therefore, acknowledge ye them that are such. In other words, when you have corporate participation, say thank you to those who do a good job. Amen? Let them know you appreciate they're doing a good job and that you're thankful for them. And don't take them for granted. 
Number two, comfort personal. Second Corinthians seven thirteen. Therefore we were comforted in what? Your comfort. Have you ever been worried about somebody and found out they was alright and then you felt alright? If you love somebody, you have. When you know they are alright, then you're alright. My grandma, Grandma Gertrude, my daddy drove a truck. Shannon's daddy drove a truck. They've gone all the time, working, making money, because it took a whole lot of money to keep Shannon straight. I just, I'm preaching this message up here. But one weekend, my daddy was planning to go see my mom. And it's just the yard hadn't been mowed, things hadn't been done. I was just a little kid. And I remember him picking up the phone and saying, Mama, I'm sorry I can't come this weekend. Of course, my mom, she was half deaf, so she hollered everything she said. She said, Dinky, don't you worry about that. She says, as long as you call me and let me know you all right, I'm all right. And I hung up the phone and I got mad because I want to go see my mom because my mom could cook. And my dad explained to me, son, sometimes you can't do everything you want to do. And he said, as long as you let my mom know you all right, she'll be all right. And that's the way it is with us, folks. We ought to love each other enough to care about each other and to check on each other. Amen? You know, I didn't like this texting thing, but I hate to admit it, it's starting to work a little bit. Why? Because you can get a whole lot more done, amen, if you learn to text each other. I was sitting in my chair the other night. I think it was 11.30. My phone sitting there went, whoop! I don't like all that noise. I just like a beep. Whoop! That thing went, whoop! And I picked it up. Yep, it was Tammy Hicks. Show us the world. The texting queen of the world. She just called and let me know everything was all right so far with her mama. And I knew she was all right, and that made me all right. Amen? That's how we're to be. To love each other, inform each other, to take care of each other, look after each other. That's our job. Comfort is personal. Then it says, very clearly, For if I had boasted anything of him of you, I'm not ashamed. But as we spake all things to you in truth, even so our boasting, which I made before Titus, is found of truth. And his inward of what? Affection is more abundant toward you, whilst he remembered the obedience of you all, and how with fear and trembling you received him, or respect. And I rejoice, therefore, that I have confidence in you in all things. Paul said this to the Corinthians. He said, I'm not worried about y'all, because he's been looking out at you. He sent me a good report. That y'all are doing good. See, that's caring for each other. We gotta, we gotta get back to caring for each other. We care for each other. It'll mean a whole lot of difference in this world. Amen? Then finally, here's the tickle first he's been looking for. Philemon 1 5. Communication is not only personal and, uh, then, uh, comfort, comfort personal and corporate participation. But number three, communication of passion. Philemon 1 5. Small little book, but a powerful message. Hearing of thy love and faith. You know why we ought to talk about what good's going on? It encourages people. When we hear that other people have been praying and working and good things are happening, what does it make you want to do? Pray and work. So good things are happening. Then it says, Which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward. How many saints? This ain't Burger King Baptist Church. This ain't Click Baptist Church. Let me make that loud and clear. This ain't a click or a bunch of clicks. We're to love everybody the same. Amen? All. All. He said all the saints, not just a particular few, that the communication of thy faith may become what? Effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you, in, which is in you in Christ. We ought to brag on each other so we say, if God can do it through that scandal, He can do it through me. Oh, I mean, I mean scandal. Excuse me. That flew over your edge. I'll get that tomorrow. If God can do something through you, He can do it through me. 
And if there's hope for them, there's hope for me. It encourages us to serve God, to pray, to witness, to win souls. Verse 7, for we have great what? And consolation in thy love. You know, if we just love each other, it would mean a world of difference. Stop complaining and start caring. Stop cussing and start communicating. Amen? That's what we need to do. Because the bowels of the innermost parts of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. You know what? When people see us, they ought to be glad to see us. Now, I'll be honest with you. There's some people in this world, when I see them coming, I go into instantaneous prayer mode. I do. I don't run because I try to be a grown-up. But if some Christians test my patience, and I have to pray, God, shut my mouth and open my ears. God, help me be sweet, not sour. Because some people will test your patience. But you've got to love them. Amen? In hopes your love will rub off on them. You see, you can't run and rip and choose who you want to serve. You've got to love everybody. Because not just not because they deserve it, they may not deserve your love and affection. But you want your love and affection and your kindness to rub off on them. And it's never going to rub off if you're not near them. If all you ever do is shut off and cut off everybody that's got problems, you're never going to see anybody's problems solved. We've got to learn to love each other and care about each other so we can see problems solved, lives changed, and people blessed. That's what you call a loving congregation of people who are patient with God and patient with each other. Because what I tell you about patient people, they're the ones who receive the blessings. I don't know about y'all, but I think our church is blessed, don't you? Our church is blessed. And I want to see it continue to be blessed. And the only way we can do that is to be in the will of God, be as a team, Serve the Lord, serve each other, and we'll have joy unspeakable and full of glory. It's going to work at Christmas time more than any other time of the year. Just go out of your way to be good to folks, and you'll see. I'll tell this story, and I'll quit. Last night, we took my wife's aunt out for her birthday. And Wendy had gone and bought her a few things, and we're going to take them out to dinner. And I told them at dinner last night, I said, let me tell you why we're doing this. I said, because I remember a Christmas about 12, 13 years ago when me and Wendy didn't know where the next dollar was going to come from. I said, y'all come in the house, I guess it was a few days before Christmas, and slid Wendy a $100 bill and said, do whatever you need to with it. And I said, that $100 bill's just as well as been 10000 to us because we didn't have a nickel. But God sent it through you. And I said, now, when you cast your bread upon the waters, it'll come back to you in not too many days. I said, it took 12, 13 years, but happy birthday. Going to buy you supper, going to give you some presents, and wish you a happy birthday. Because you were good to us. Now we want to be good to you. Her aunt takes care of her grandma. That's a job. It's a job. Takes care of it and does a good job. I want her to know how much we appreciate her. How much we appreciate what she does. Wendy would do more if Wendy was near. But Wendy's here. Come on now. Get where I'm saying. So we've got to be good to each other because everybody's got a different job. And a different responsibility. And if we encourage each other in what we're doing, the more people we're going to reach for Jesus. Every head's bowed.